Hi everyone, today we're going to take a tour through my artist grade palettes. So some of these were bought empty and I filled them. Some of these were bought uh, full and I'm going to talk about each palette. Now I want to say the point of this video is not to show off or show you how many paints I have. Nobody needs this much paint. I have enough to last me probably a lifetime. The point is to kind of go through them and talk about what worked for me and what didn't work and hopefully this will help you make a good decision. That's my goal with most of my reviews and uh, you know, share videos is to help you save money and buy something that suits your needs, your budget, your space, and all these things. I'm happy to answer any questions. And yeah, let's get to it. Uh, I'm going to start with the palettes that I filled up myself and then I will switch to sets. Um, obviously there's a lot of information to cover here and a lot of it is just things that work for me. This is a very, very personal preference type of thing. So if I say I don't like something and you like it, you know, don't be insulted. Um, just listen to my reasons so you can understand why certain things don't work for me. So my latest uh, purchase for just like an empty palette is this one and this one is I know this is like super distracting I'll get to this in a sec uh, this one is the 19 wells porcelain or ceramic uh, palette from Jackson's and so it has 17 of these like smaller wells and then two very large mixing areas and it comes with like a plastic, a pretty uh, sturdy plastic cover, which I keep on it at most times when I'm not painting. And um, so this is kind of my studio palette for my more um, like purist, serious, <laughs> quote unquote, water coloring. And uh, I tend to use smaller palettes for my art journaling and I'll, I'll get to that. But I love this palette. I just love the material. I love this really, you know, beautiful, heavy ceramic and the large mixing areas are fantastic. Um, it just feels nicer than plastic. What can I say? Again, personal preference. I, I just like the way this feels and um, yeah, and as for the wells, I feel like it works really well for me because they are big enough so I can squeeze uh, a couple of paints in the same well. So for example, here I have a few different yellows and then here I have a couple of these more like violet uh, colors and um, it kind of allows me to still change up my colors as I go but also have this really beautiful and um, large palette. Of course, you can find something larger. I think there's another one that has another row of these smaller wells here. Uh, I think 32 wells. Uh, so I can imagine that one is also really good. Um, I'm now working more in my art journals and I also do a lot of filming and then this is my filming area and that is my more, um, you know, proper watercolor painting area. So I haven't been using this as much, but I really love it. And I think if you only do watercolors and, you know, you don't have a lot of like turnover of products in your creating area uh, I think this is a beautiful beautiful option this is like one of those things you can just buy this for your studio and you're good to go for 30 years that's how I feel about this and I really like um, such things you know things that last and it's the type of thing I, it's not very expensive but certain things you know you need to try a few cheaper options to feel like okay this is something that is worth spending money on um now this is a robux palette and these come in a variety of 
sizes, setups. I will link you to that place. It's not an affiliate link. Um, these come on, I think you, usually they come with it as like part of the price or whatever, but they come on a Lazy Susan, which I don't have right now. Um, so it turns really, really easily and smoothly. And uh, that's one of the things that make this palette so, so easy to work with. I have the, um, this is like the basic setup and then it comes with a few inserts that fit in here, which you can switch out. And my favorite one that they offer, again, for the same reasons, is this uh, ceramic insert, uh, which I just love. The way that you, the way that the watercolor behaves on it, it's just, it's just beautiful. And um, so you have to kind of buy the ingredients separately, but that's one of the great things that you can really create your own custom palette and they also have I got this when I most of my palettes were um, half pans and you can see that they fit all the brands fit in this some more snugly some you have to kind of push them in and then it's a, a bit of a struggle to get them out uh, but they all fit so if you want more of a custom palette and you have mostly half pans, this system would work for you. It doesn't look as clean as it would if you would either, you know, squeeze your paint directly to the wells or even better, use their extra wells. So I have, I think, one <laughs> um, of these wells that fit and every size of palette has you know the 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 right wells that you can purchase so if i was now starting and if i wanted to get now a palette i would get probably the they have like a really nice one that has 40 something wells i think and they're just bigger um for art journaling Pretty much in most sizes that I art journal, I really find the half pans to be, um, you know, large enough that I can enjoyably use them. But then when I work just with watercolors on larger pieces of paper, I feel like they're a little bit limiting, uh, especially with large brushes, because I kind of have to dig into them. And that's why I really love the larger wells that I have in the ceramic palette. And these even if I didn't have the small half pen and I would fill the whole well, it's just, it's a bit too small for what I'm using now most of the time. So again, for art journaling, I'd probably use this, but this takes such, it, it takes a lot of real estate and I do a lot of mixed media and I bring other stuff in and then sometimes this area is for scrapbooking. So I, I have kind of a, a fast turnover of supplies and <clears throat> for that reason this palette has been a little bit neglected in the last year or two but I think this is a fantastic option it does have you know that it's a very 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 sturdy plastic that I think will also it's a palette you can buy and use for like 20 years no problem but it's still plastic and it has like these edges. It's just less elegant than the ceramic palette. So, it, you know, it's, it's definitely not a deal breaker, but I just wanna give you all the information so you can make the best decisions and you won't have to spend money on something that is not, um, you know, the perfect fit for you. And then I added also this insert at some point because, you know, obviously this wasn't enough. Um, it's just I go through stages and sometimes I want to have all the colors. I never use all these colors on one painting, but I want to have all these options. And then I switch to a more limited palette that is, you know, less overwhelming and is easy to navigate. So I just go through stages and um, I think the company that makes this has fantastic products. Again, I love the Lazy Susan feature. That one is awesome um so lots and lots of advantages to this palette 
if I had to buy one now again I would buy a smaller one like not so large this is I think what is this like 15 inches um, so I would buy something you know like 12 inches max um, but yeah obviously you can fit a lot of paints here and it's very very uh, appealing I would say so moving on to um, some more palettes this one is kind of a, a very inexpensive plastic palette it works well with tube paints it's okay I never fell in love with it I never really wanted to use it for me it's just it wasn't it just wasn't the right fit so I don't know hopefully I can use this paint here because it's really a shame to um, waste it but yeah this you know some of the color would just like some of the paint would uh, fall off so that's always the disadvantage of having things on the top side of your palette like this one has because when you close it then the paint can come out that's why I also I don't like this it's it's just a bit messy if you leave it open all the time then um, sure it can work it has a lot of mixing space nice big wells um, yeah I never really enjoyed it <clears throat> next is this palette this is made in Korea I don't know these are also pretty inexpensive on I think I got mine from Amazon or Jackson's I will link to everything I can find so you can um, see all the products um, I do really like the um, the setup of this palette and you can see it also comes with this tray so you really have a ton of space for mixing colors um, it's a great palette and I think it's great for travel it has a really nice uh, closure and uh, it feels sturdy uh, what I don't like about it is that I just like the flexibility of using half pans or full pans so I can change up my palette according to my mood and destination or subject of painting so that's my issue with these types of palettes that you squeeze in your tube paints but that's just me for um you know judging this as the palette itself and not necessarily what i like i think it's a really really great option and if you work with tube paints especially if you also uh, travel with your paints or go outside um this is great it's not like the most you know tiny super travel palette but uh, I think it's a really really uh, good option I like it it feels nice uh, a lot lot nicer than this this one okay so hopefully this makes some sense so this is probably my most used palette you can find a video on my channel I will try to remember to link it here um, showing which paints are here so I call this my rainbow palette and it <laughs> matches my sweater <laughs> this is assembled from many manufacturers and it's really my favorite colors and I feel like I can paint almost everything with this and it gives me so much versatility obviously it's you know very bright a very bright palette I think I have maybe one purple here that is a little less intense but um, I find it very very easy to work with this and also to mix neutrals with it because it just it, it's kind of a very nice representation of all the colors on the edges of the color wheel so I know I have that saturation um, yeah probably also with the exception of these two this is Naples yellow and this is Naples yellow reddish uh, both are schminke uh, which I find very very hard to mix by myself and I really like to have them on hand 
Um, so I really feel like I have that nice um, selection of colors that are mostly the most saturated version of that color you can find on the color wheel. And then I can easily desaturate them and create my own semi-neutrals and neutrals and just, you know, mix them together very, very easily to create all the colors that are more in the center of the color wheel. And that's just, that is, uh, that's what I really, really like. You obviously don't need, I have here, I think, 26 colors. Um, you know, obviously, if you have like a really nice color, like a phthalo yellow and then a lemon yellow, I'm just doing this because that's where they are on the color wheel in my head. So you can mix very, very vibrant turquoises and you don't need like your extra turquoises, but... I like to use turquoise a lot on its own and then I also like to mix it with other colors so it just makes sense for me to have this sort of palette and I just I love it I use it all the time it calls my name and um, yeah the addition that I have to this palette so this um, I get asked all the time this was this tin was contained uh, watercolors, like craft kind of uh, cheaper watercolors that were discontinued and you can't get this tin, unfortunately. So, but you can get now um, these cute pink ones and I think light blue ones. Uh, I'll link to you to those if I can find them. So you can't get this particular uh, tin which I'm sorry to say because it's really, really pretty, but this is a very standard size uh, tin. It's like a 24 empty, like 24 half pans or 12 full pans uh, tin. And this works for me. I feel like I can get enough colors here and it's not too many for me. It's not um, too few, it's just right. <laughs> so. I, I love this palette. It's also pretty compact and I can easily, you know, bring it when I'm, I want to use watercolors and then put it away when I'm not using them. What I have, what I consider the accompanying palette to this one is one I assembled in one of the little uh, Prima sets. But again, you don't need to buy a Prima set for this tin. It's quite a standard 12 half pans or six full pans tin. Uh, the nice thing about the smaller ones is that unlike the 24 ones, which the space here is very, very narrow, here you can fit another row in the middle without a problem. Um, here, if you take these out, I've never actually done this, but I know you could fit more paints here. I don't know, I actually like this um, setup. Again, it makes switching them really really easy because they are kept in place by these um, like notches here so I never felt the need to take this insert out and fill the the box without it but you can and then you will be able to fit more paints here so this is my neutrals palette and it doesn't contain just neutrals but all of the colors here are you know, not very saturated. And I really like using these together. So I could probably get a larger tin like this one and fit everything. But I don't know, this really works well for me. And also having the neutrals palette, if you want to do something more um, sketchy, monochromatic, just, you know, value study, this one really comes in handy. So again, this has all different brands in it and I have some lighter grays and a couple of golds here some browns and oranges that I like and then a selection of dark colors including um, you know like perline violet or perline green and then also indigo so and I have here also neutral tint so really like a, a very nice selection of neutral colors. You can see that I don't have here at all things like yellow ochre, burnt sienna, um, umber, burnt umber, or raw umber. Those are just, 
not my colors and I really it, it takes a lot of <laughs> painting to just accept that because those colors are just such classics and you find them in every palette and I think most painters use them all the time but you know if something doesn't work for you so you know that's fine you don't have to force it so these are probably my most used most loved palettes and okay let's move on to some that I bought as they are and we can talk about them I'm going to start with another uh, recent addition to relatively recent addition to my collection so this uh, little tin which I bought empty um, you can find these very easily on Amazon this contains the Daniel Smith Ultimate Mixing Set, which comes in this horrible box, which we have discussed here quite a few times on this channel. So I won't repeat that again, but this is useless to me, except for my, maybe carrying um, extra half pans because it is very compact, but it's not a usable palette. Um, so this contains the Ultimate Mixing Set, which has 15 colors. So this row here, this row here, and then here we have Thalo, Th Thalo Blue. Those are from the Ultimate Mixing Set from Daniel Smith. And then here in the middle, I have added Cobalt Teal, which I love, um, Cobalt Turquoise, which I also love, and then two of the new paints. This is Titanium Gray. This is the Alvaro Caliente paint. And then here, I think this is green appetite I don't know I just stuck it in here I had some squeezed in this half pan um, this I feel is kind of a go-to palette for me these days when I'm painting something that is you know somewhat realistic um, because I feel you can really mix pretty much any color from the colors here this set is I've, I have a review of it on my channel this is the Paul Rubens 24 half pan set. Um, I think these are artist grade. I think you can find, you know, some pigment information and light fastness information um, online. It's a good set. It has a nice color selection. The colors are very, very intense, very creamy. I love the tin. You know, it's a good starter set that can kind of grow with you. And I do love having that the metal tins, the good thing about them is that they will fit any brand of pans that you have. So this one you can really, you know, add paints, change them up and kind of create your own, which is what I did here. Um, but as a starter set, I think it's a really good option and especially since it comes in a metal tin, I think it's a good price because it's very hard to find something comparable to this for this price and comparable I mean the quality and the tin um, yeah so a good option I use it sometimes but I kind of I just I use my custom palettes more often um, this tin contained the Sennelier 24 half pan set which I think was the first or one of the first artist grade uh, palettes that I bought um, those pans have since moved around and have ended up in different palettes. So right now this contains the Prima Pastel Dream Set and the Shimmering Lights. Um, I don't use this palette very often, but the Sennelier 24 Half Pan Set I think is beautiful. Um, it costs around $100, 100 euros. That's the price where I usually see it i'm sure there are sales i'm sure it's different depending on where you are in the world and where you're shopping and if there's a coupon or a sale or whatever but um yeah it's pretty expensive this set is around i think 40 something euros but sennelier paints are gorgeous i love the the color selection that comes in their 24 set i think is really beautiful um, very versatile but it doesn't have like all the colors that you see in all the sets so it is um, a bit an opportunity to try some yeah some different colors if you're coming from the world of you know ready-made sets I just love them I use them a lot I love the Sennelier paints I have a few tubes 
the tubes are beautiful the half pans are I think even nicer they're less sticky than the tubes and yeah I use pretty much all the paints that came in this set they're just spread around my different palettes but I absolutely love Sennelier they're one of my favorite brands let's move on to white knights this is a very large set this is the 36 this was the 36 um, full pans ha white knights set um, I love this set this is one of my recommendations for people on a budget who want a beautiful quality you know vibrant artist grade tons and tons of paint you know this is full, full pans you get so much paint in this um, this you know this 36 set will last you a lifetime of painting um, <clears throat> it's extremely affordable very competitive price the downsides to this set uh, is the size if you have limited space this is quite a big palette if you have no space issues then of course it's an advantage to have a lot of mixing space you have a lot of mixing space here and that you can't fit here um, all the brands so some full pans from other brands won't fit here this one is from Windsor and Newton so this one kind of this one kind of fits but it takes yeah it kind of fits but it's a little bit wider than their own uh, pans these are the Jackson's empty ones and they don't fit really here so that's uh, that's the problem with some of these plastic palettes but if you intend to stay within the same brand what I would recommend actually is to buy the 24 full pan set that comes in this palette they offer that so it has like 24 paints here and then you have an empty space which you can either immediately fill with your own choice of colors or wait and see you know what you use or till you have the budget for them um, I love White Knights paints I think they are fantastic great option I still use them I still love them um, I kind of switched this palette around a few times I need to go back again and kind of make again the ultimate <laughs> White Knights palette that's the problem that it doesn't uh, you can't mix brands I mean some you can but not all but um, this is a, a great option especially if you just want to buy one palette get started not think about it this is fantastic if your budget is very tight this is the 12 pan set and again I moved things around I customize my palettes all the time um, but this is a great option I think this costs less than twenty dollars to get and you can learn a lot about color mixing again this is such a good uh, affordable brand with these kinds of paints around I really don't see the need to buy student grade paint um, unless you use your watercolors really really heavily and then something like the Cotman uh, tubes which are really big and affordable that would be a good option but yeah if if you don't use a ton of paint I would just go with St. Petersburg with like artist grade and and skip even the the student grade paint um, Another set that I have, this is the Magello 20, 36 tube set. So it comes with uh, tubes that are, they look like these. So these are seven milliliters, I want to say. And these are made in Korea. So this is a Mission Gold. I think the silver is their student grade. Um, I like the palette it's very very large so again if space is an issue this is not a good fit but if you have the space this gives you a ton of mixing space it fits all the paints in the set really really nicely um, again I prefer switching around my paints so for my 
preferences this didn't work but the paint is itself is very the the paint that comes in this set is incredibly vibrant uh, the color selection is nice with the exception of the blues I would um, just add buy a tube of ultramarine blue and um, maybe something like cobalt blue depending on which blues you like and squeeze them instead of the selection that comes here I've talked about this a lot in another video I stand by that uh, review I think that's a big um, you know boo-boo <laughs> a big problem with uh, this set but it's easily fixable with just adding a couple of nice blues so um, it's definitely not a deal breaker but uh, as it is I think there are uh, better options so yeah definitely has some advantages uh, some people love these paints I can see why they're very um, it's easy to read them they're incredibly bright the color selection is fantastic except the blues and um, yeah I don't use this as much I like other ones better and this palette is like so huge that again it's just like it takes so much space that I prefer to have something um, smaller here in my more mixed media area let's call it uh, again the box is a deal breaker these are Ganzai Tambi paints these are Japanese paints um, paint from the Far East is different in the way that is formulated and the way that it is used. They tend to be more opaque. The um, Traditionally, the paper is different. The paper that is used in uh, Japan and the Far East for watercolor painting. So it's a different for formula. Comparing it to the European brands or the American brands, it's kind of like apples and oranges. So I'm not going to go into the paint itself, but this set, you can also find it quite affordably now online. Um, it has a nice color selection. You can see the paint is beautiful, but this palette is just so huge, so uncomfortable. There's no space to mix your colors. So I think I will just have to, you know, say goodbye to it at some point <laughs> because I, I love how it looks it's very very appealing to me but I just don't use it because it's so inconvenient so yeah these are the Ganzai Tambi paints so another addition to my collection is this beautiful box uh, these are Aquarius paints from Poland I have a review on these on my channel or like a first impression type of thing um, these are beautiful I'm thinking, again, the problem with this box, the box is beautiful. It's a very unique, very, you know, handmade looking set. Um, I think this would make a beautiful gift, but for me, it's not the most usable palette. Um, I need mixing area, so you could add a palette here or paint this white or all kinds of other solutions. I think what I will do is I will get a metal palette and create my own perfect custom color choices um, palette from this set but the paint itself is beautiful it's very comparable to the white knights paint and um, it it is also very affordable artist grade you know light fast all that good stuff if you can get your hands on this definitely consider it um, the color selection the the range of colors that they have is better than the white knights in my opinion even though white knights have like a hundred colors and um, it's a, a, a nice color range but Aquarius have more colors and some of the the colors are really really beautiful and you can't find them in the white knights range so I'm thinking though if you use a metal palette you could probably create a really great mix of these two brands somehow I feel like they would work well together I don't know maybe it's the way that uh, paints are made and you know these are Russian these are Polish so uh, maybe this the formula is similar but yeah I think that's what I will do because I really want to use them I, I don't want a collection that I can make uh, you know videos on and look at that's not the point I want to use these and I 
need to find a way that makes them easy to use. So I think that's in my future creating a custom palette of these. And yeah, the one palette that I for forgot to talk about is this one. And this currently houses some of my Shinhan hybrid paints, which are, they call themselves a hybrid paint. Um, they say it's a hybrid of watercolor and gouache. The tubes looks like this and they contain 20 mils, which is more than most, uh, most brands have the big uh, tubes have 15 mils or 11. Um, so there's tons of paint. These are again like very 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 affordable um, I like some of the colors better than the others. I don't have like the whole selection, but I have a few of them and They re-wet nicely and um, Yeah, they're they're an interesting option um, I have used them quite a bit and I really like them and this one has a combination of them and some Windsor and Newton uh, gouache and I think a couple of Holbein's um, The palette is really really nice. It has I think I Think it's it's almost like a vacuum closure um, You know with this rubber here on the edge so that's why I chose it for gouache because uh, I feel like some gouache dries better than other and I wanted a, a palette that seals uh, better for them. Uh, I really like it. It's you can use the the top as more mixing space, but there's a lot of space here. And again, you can uh, squeeze. This is meant for people that use paint uh, straight from the tube, and you know you squeeze it, you let it dry, and then you rewet it. I think that's what this palette <laughs> works best with. Um, yeah, I think it's a good option. I like it a lot. The size is actually pretty nice. I, it's, it's big, so you have like a lot of space, but it's not ginormous. And yeah, I think, I think it's a good option. I think this would also be good for like traveling. Oh, this is made by Magello. I think this is good for traveling, not if you paint, you know, in the street like an urban sketcher, but if you are going to, I don't know, paint in like a hotel or a friend's apartment or something like that where you will have uh, a desk. I think it's a good option because it it's very kind of sturdy and it has a nice closure. Um, so yeah, it, it feels very, very nice, like nice quality, you know, for plastic. So. I hope this was somewhat helpful to you and I know these videos are like so long and so there's like so much information but yeah thanks for watching if you have any questions leave them below and if you want to see the one about um, like more let's say craft or student grade paint like Prima Jane Davenport and that sort of thing then leave me a comment give this video a thumbs up so I know you will like it subscribe and i will see you in another video soon bye